So, who's to blame when your interactions start to go off the rails? Well, here's a clue. There's only one person in the room that you have control over. Hi, and welcome to Turning a New Leaf. In this series, we talk about important self and professional leadership topics. My name is Frank Walsh, and I'm here to give you something to think about and to work on in just five minutes. There are plenty of ways to react to a discussion that's turned non-productive, but most of them will only make the situation worse. Raising your volume or leaning over the table in an aggressive posture will likely escalate things, particularly if others in the room are ready to play along. It doesn't have to be aggression or open conflict. Shutting down or throwing in the towel are other surefire ways to make sure that the situation goes from bad to worse. As a leader, you have a responsibility to rein things in and to get the discussion back on track. Pointing out the behavior of others will likely only push them further into the abyss. The way to bring things back is to own your own role in the dysfunction. When you notice things getting away from you, as we discussed last time, take the opportunity to push the pause button on yourself and on the interaction. Tell your truth to others in a way that does not pass judgment or assign blame. Make sure it's about you and how you want to do things differently. A good pattern interruption might look a little like the following. First, acknowledge that the interaction has turned non-productive. You could say something like, I feel like this discussion is getting away from us, and I'd like to take a moment to collect myself and help us all move forward. Second, recognize your intent in the interaction and acknowledge that of the others. Something like, I know that my goal here is to make the best decision possible from the available options, and I'm sure that all of you feel the same way, even though our approaches may be different. Third is to own your behavior without judgment or blame. You can acknowledge the actions of others only in so much as to show how they trigger you, but don't assign intent. You might say something like, I know that when a disagreement starts to get heated, I feel like I'm not being listened to, and I react by getting louder and more aggressive, and I stop listening. Finally, make the offer for a new way forward. I know that my behavior can cause some of you to escalate and others to shut down and none of us leaves happy. I'd really like to find a new way forward. So can you please help me understand your position and I promise to listen respectfully. This pattern interruption is something you might consider scripting in advance with your coach. If you've learned to see the behaviors that trigger you, you'll know which ones to prepare for. It's possible you might have to do this several times in the course of a meeting. Remember to keep it about you and not about others. A bad reaction is, you guys are not listening. A better reaction is, I feel myself getting defensive again and I'm not listening very well. Can we back up and start over? You may even find you need to make this interruption before the discussion ever starts, particularly if you know that the person you're entering the discussion with can trigger your behaviors. Your vulnerability will be assigned to them that this time might be different and they may drop their guard. It's time for you to start putting the last four videos into practice. We will certainly revisit this but next time we're going to start to move on to some other leadership topics. I'll see you then.